Hello everyone and welcome to Re-Entry. My name is Petri and this video marks the beginning of a new series covering the key maneuvers and procedures of the Apollo 13 mission. As the crew of Apollo 13 flew past the moon, they were the ones who traveled the furthest distance away from Earth, a record they still hold. I wish to let you experience part of this mission, so I decided to host an in-game event during the Steam Space Exploration Fest, where I give all re-entry players access to the fifth campaign of re-entry, the Apollo 13 mission. By using an extensive set of audio files, real mission transcripts and procedures based on the real flight plan and checklists used by the crew, I aim to create an immersive and realistic recreation of the mission. I will try to guide you through the correct checklists and point you to where they are and follow these real procedures to my best effort and to what my game allows. I have also tried to be creative and gone quite far to let you execute procedures even if they aren't directly supported by the game or simulated. The key goal of this mission is to let you get an immersive view of what life on board an Apollo mission was, how they followed the flight plan, what housekeeping procedures they went through, and how the communication between the crew and mission control was. In addition, I hope to share how the dynamics evolved as the explosion happened to get the crew home. So, keep in mind that this mission is my best effort at bringing Apollo 13 to your PC. I might have understood some procedures or maneuvers incorrectly, and there might be differences between my in-game instruments, gorges, panels, etc., to what the audio and communication were, but I hope that you will still be able to have fun with this. This series is a recording of my first ever playthrough. I will take some notes of issues I stumble upon, and the main idea is that you can use these recordings, or this series, to help you complete the missions during your own playthrough. Apollo 13, the third US manned lunar landing mission, will be launched April 11th from Kennedy Space Center, Florida, to explore a hilly upland region of the moon and bring back rocks perhaps 5 billion years old. The Apollo 13 lunar module will stay on the moon more than 33 hours and the landing crew will leave the spacecraft twice to emplace scientific experiments on the lunar surface and to continue geological investigations. The Apollo 13 landing site is in the Framora uplands. The two National Aeronautics and Space Administration previous landings were in the Mare or Sea areas, Apollo 11 in the Sea of Tranquility and Apollo 12 in the Ocean of Storms. So the Apollo 11 mission uh, landed in the Sea of Tranquility, which is here. And the exact location is in this area here, as marked on the map. Apollo 12 landed, uh, if I recall correctly, somewhere in this region here. And uh, Apollo 13 is going to be landing in the up, uh, hilly uplands of uh, quite north from the Framoro crater, so in this area here. The Apollo 13 crewmen are Commander James Lovell, Command Module Pilot Thomas Mattingly, and Lunar Module Pilot Fred Hayes. However, a couple of days before the mission uh, was scheduled to launch, uh, Mattingly uh, were exposed to German missiles, and uh, uh, the backup Command Module Pilot uh, Jack Swaggart had to step in and uh, replaced Mattingly as the command module pilot on the primary crew of Apollo 13. So in the end, uh, the ones who are going to fly up into space on Apollo 13 is Commander Lovell, command module pilot Jack Swaggart, and lunar module pilot Fred Hayes. So the crew of Apollo 13 will be launched into Earth orbit on a Saturn V. The Apollo 13 objectives are to perform selenological inspection, survey, and sampling of materials in a pre-selected region of the Fremora Formation, 
deploy and activate an Apollo Lunar Surfix experiment package, the ALSEP, develop man's capability to work in the lunar environment, and obtain photographs of candidate exploration sites. Uh, as mentioned, let me uh, zoom in a little bit here. The Apollo 13 landing site is in the hilly uplands to the north of the crater Fremoro. Lunar coordinates for the landing sites are 3.6 degrees south latitude by 17.5 degrees west longitude, which is about 95.6 nautical miles east of the Apollo 12 landing point at Surveyor 3 crater. So uh, let's see, three between three and four. So you can say that it's here and somewhere exactly here on the map by looking at the uh, longitude and latitude coordinates. Apollo 13 is a mission of science, so a lot of the objectives were science-based. The empty third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle will be targeted to strike the moon before the lunar landing and its impact will be recorded by the seismometer left by the Apollo 12 astronauts last November. The spent lunar module ascent stage, as in Apollo 12, will be directed to impact the moon after rendezvous and final LM separations to provide a signal to both seismometers. Okay, before jumping into the mission itself, uh, let's take a brief look at the Apollo 13 flight plan. So first, uh, let us uh, get an overview of the initial part of the mission. So down here, we can see that the main aspects of the initial part of the mission, which is the first few hours, is going to be mainly in the CSM. Uh, we have some checks that are, it's going to happen in the lunar module, but most of the time we are uh, will be spent in the command module. So initially, let me scroll up so you can see the timeline. This is the mission time, 5 hours, 10 hours, 15 hours and so on. So uh, the first thing that is going to happen is that we have the ascent and uh, uh, insertion into low Earth orbit. Uh, once we reach orbit, uh, we are going to do systems checkout and insertion checklists. Then we are going to uh, perform a P52 uh, IMU alignment option 3. Uh, this is uh, going to uh, be done by using the computer and the optics to ensure that uh, any drift happen on the IMU and gets uh, removed. Then we are going to do the translunar injection. This is a burn that will take the spacecraft uh, onto a lunar trajectory um, with a target of reaching moon at the perigee of about 60 nautical miles of altitude. Uh, once we are on a lunar trajectory, we are going to do the transposition docking and LM uh, ejection. This basically means that we are going to separate from the launch vehicle perform a turnaround man maneuver and then maneuver back towards the launch vehicle and dock with the lunar module. The lunar module is still attached to the launch vehicle, so we are basically going to pull it out and bring it with us to the moon. So then we're going to dock with it and uh, eject the lunar module from the launch vehicle, so it becomes part of the spa spacecraft as a whole. And this basically adds a new room into the spacecraft stack, meaning that we'll have the command module cabin and the lunar module cabin with a tun tunnel uh, in between those uh, that the crew can, can navigate back and forth uh, with. Uh, once we have done that, we will uh, do a lot of housekeeping things uh, all the way uh, until we reach the moon. So that kind of covers the initial part of the mission and the first few missions that I've designed in this campaign. So let's take a quick look at uh, some of the other things that are important to know about an Apollo mission. Uh, so first, uh, there is uh, a need to maintain, do system maintenance and ensure that things are working uh, efficiently and well and that the ECS, uh, the environmental control system, and things like that um, are doing the right thing. So 
Uh, one of these is that we have a schedule uh, where we'll do the fuel cell purge and water dump. So you can see that there's um, a couple of timestamps here where we'll do uh, the uh, H2 fuel check and uh, there's some remarks here as well. And uh, these are required to make sure that the fuel cells are working well. The next important thing is the uh, uh, canish change, which basically changes the filters in uh, the CO2 scrubbing uh, system, meaning that uh, the, the crew is breathing air and they're producing CO2, and that CO2 needs to be re uh, removed. So there's a schedule here uh, saying that the canisters position A or B will be exchanged and replaced uh, throughout the mission to ensure that all of that is operational. And then the final couple of sections uh, is kind of the main uh, planned burns and events that are going to happen on board a spacecraft. So first of all, I mentioned already that initially we are going to do the TLI burn, which uh, uh, is a launch vehicle burn, the stage uh, 4B. Uh, then we are going to do the CSM LM ejection, and then there's a couple of mid-course uh, uh, options, and some of these might be used, some of them might not, depending on how well TLI goes and you know, how the trajectory uh, main is maintained uh, as we coast towards the moon. Then we have the lunar orbit injection burn, which will bring us into a lunar orbit um, uh, where the spacecraft stack basically stays around the moon. And this burn will, uh, or is planned, to bring the spacecraft down to an orbit of, uh, of uh, 57 nautical miles of altitude uh, and times uh, 168.3 nautical miles of altitude. And then we have the descent orbit injection burn, which will bring the spacecraft into uh, um, an orbit uh, designed to reach the, la reach the landing points uh, where we should be landing on the moon. Then we'll do uh, an undock and separation, circularization burn, and so on. And then uh, once we're uh, done with the lunar landing and the lunar module has reached the spacecraft again, we are going to do the trans-Earth injection, which brings the command module and the crew uh, back on a trajectory uh, that will return them to Earth. And then there's a couple of mid-course correction uh, windows that allows the crew to correct their entry trajectory. And then we'll reach the entry interface, which basically is a point 400,000 feet, feet of altitude uh, in the Earth atmosphere. And once we reach this point, there's only a couple of minutes left until we are in the Earth atmosphere and performing re-entry. There's also a couple of um, uh, burns planned for the lunar module. And this is uh, the power de descent, which uh, is the burn that will take the lunar module from the uh, landing orbit into a safe landing on the lunar surface. So this is the landing uh, burn. And once we've landed, we are going to get back up to the command module. So this is the ascent. So we'll do a lunar ascent. And then there's a couple of burns uh, required to reach the command module and dock with it. And uh, that's about it for the lunar module. And finally, um, on page 47, uh, there is also a little overview of the battery charge schedule. Uh, we have a, a few batteries on board the spacecraft, which needs to be recharged during the mission to ensure that the command module has enough power uh, once the service module uh, gets separated before re-entry. Once the service module has been separated from the command module, the command module only have a, a couple of hours left of batteries in the battery A, B, and C. Uh, and battery A and B are used uh, somewhat during the mission, especially during ascent. 
to uh, power uh, systems. So this needs to be recharged on the schedule to make sure that we have enough battery power during re-entry. So this is the battery charge schedule. Uh, the missions are going to be trying to follow uh, some of these uh, uh, schedules that I've just mentioned. That's, so that's what I wanted to bring it up before we start with the mission. So with that, let's get started. <laughs> 